every month. These bird watchers walk along the beach, but instead of looking up, they concentrate on the ground. Look at that bird. It's a common mer. The breast has been eaten. Yeah. It makes great dinner conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you about my latest dead bird? <laughs> the volunteers are members of the Coastal Observation and Seabird Survey Team, a program out of the University of Washington. For nearly two decades, hundreds of citizen scientists have collected, measured, and recorded the carcasses that have washed ashore from California to Alaska. Two wings. Two feet, no eyeballs. The data is used to track seasonal and long-term changes in seabirds. Really, most fun thing about um, running a long-term citizen science program where you have a really big data set in space and time is that um, it's open science. You can share it with everybody and, and um, help people to ask and answer their questions, whether they're scientists or they're coastal residents. Since 1998, the COAST program has recorded nearly 76,000 dead birds. Researchers began seeing a spike in mortality about four years ago. That was the largest most intense marine heat wave the world has ever seen. A warming of water the size of Canada, called the blob, affected food chains, spurred a toxic algae bloom, and disrupted migratory cues. Now there is a die-off in Alaska and Russia, and while the reasons aren't clear yet, the dead birds illustrate how global warming could impact cold environments. It's not only going to change the phytoplankton and the zooplankton and the seabirds and the marine mammals, who some people would say, well, that's nice, but why do we care about that? It's going to change the commercial fish. How much? 47. With wide-scale implications, these volunteers know even small actions can make a difference. If somebody were to ask you in the future, what did you do to help the environment? That we can say we counted dead birds every month. <laughs> a way to help their community and scientists better understand the health of the coastal environment. Christophe Fourier, Associated Press.